So, uh, your read on what we're seeing in Ottawa, I mean, in, in your job, front and centre here, uh, how to make sure that public safety is maintained? Well, you maintain public safety by ensuring that uh, police and other partners within the public safety apparatus are closely monitoring the situation, have got the resources on the ground and are working within uh, the broader uh, community uh, to respond to the situation as required. And Look, I'll just say, of course, we recognize that there is a right to peaceful protest, but there's a big distinction between that and some of the expressions that we've seen uh, from the leaders of this convoy. And you pointed it out, um, you know, the flying of Confederate flags, um, the equating of vaccine mandates to the uh, resurgent uh, Nazi Germany, uh, calling for the violent overthrow of, uh, of the government. Of course, Canadians reject that. And truckers do as well. You know, 90 percent vaccinated. Um, you know, you've seen the trucker alliance disavow and put some distance between themselves and this, this convoy uh, because it does represent, I think, a fringe element. The best way to get back to normal is to continue to get vaccinated, and our government will continue uh, to, to pursue that in conjunction with Canadians. Some linked to the protest, Marco, vowing to stay past the weekend. Uh, you know, they want all vaccine mandates to be repealed, which seems highly unlikely, of course. If this protest doesn't end by Monday, then what? Well, that's why it's important that uh, police uh, services, as well as the sergeant at arms, who's responsible for um, the safety and security of everyone that works on the Hill, are providing guidance and direction in real time uh, to, to everyone. Um, you heard Chief Slowly and others say to uh, residents who work uh, in the downtown core, look, stay home. Uh, we'll find other ways to continue to ensure that the business of government goes on and that uh, those uh, who need essential services get them. Uh, you've seen throughout the pandemic that we've been able to leverage virtual parliament. Uh, we've done that against the backdrop of a pandemic, and we'll continue to follow the best advice that we're getting uh, from police and other partners that work in the public safety uh, apparatus. And of course, those decisions are being taken independent of the elected government. I know in your role, you've no doubt had an opportunity to see some of the language online. Some of it is extreme and violent. Uh, those who are either in support of the convoy or have their own agenda here. Uh, what, what are we to make of that, that level of anger? It's very troubling, and uh, it's actually quite discouraging. I don't know when the last time you logged on to Twitter and, and felt particularly enlightened. I think a lot of us feel like we go on and there's a torrent of harmful, abusive content. Um, you know, earlier uh, uh, this week, uh, I had to uh, make the point that uh, one of my colleagues, Omar Al-Gabra, uh, was blatantly called uh, a terrorist, and some of that was linked to uh, the support for the leadership of this convoy. So I think we are genuinely concerned about uh, the fringe elements uh, that, that are very angry, and I think that there needs to be a bright line uh, between what is robust, free speech, constructive dialogue around the public health care measures that we have followed thus far, and, you know, the type of conduct that amounts to um, hate speech, that amounts to incitement, and that amounts to violence. And, of course, I, Canadians get that. The GoFundMe campaign for the convoy has raised uh, somewhere in the vicinity of $7 million, some of the donations anonymous, others coming from outside of Canada. Uh, no doubt there is anger out there. They, you know, they've also got people signing on to a petition, uh, basically asking the Canadian government to lift these mandates or else resign. Uh, what, what do you make of, of the amount of support? And I understand it's small, relatively speaking, to the size of the country and the number of Canadians, but nevertheless, the very loud support that, that this has. Well, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. It is loud. It is also very small. And look, uh, GoFundMe, I think, has said uh, that they have put uh, some suspension on the release of those funds pending uh, some additional questions asked about where it's coming from and mo most importantly, uh, what it's going to be used towards. But I'll tell you this. I mean, if it's going to be used to continue to proliferate uh, hate speech and the flying of Confederate flags and the spread of false lies about those who work uh, in the public health care sector, or who work, uh, you know, in the elected sphere to help Canadians get through the pandemic, uh, then there should be action taken. But again, those would be decisions for GoFundMe and uh, for the police uh, services, who again are taking those decisions independently. The other thing I, I just want to get your read on as well, as no doubt as we all are proud Canadian, when you see the convoy and all those Canadian flags and people trying to send the message that this is about Canadian patriotism, uh, talking about the government you're a part of being linked to tyranny, what goes through your mind, Marco? Well, look, um, we're Canadian. 
we believe in democracy and democracy, you know, as a hallmark has to involve a vigorous debate. And, you know, I have the honor of working in a chamber where that debate can be very intense and very emotional at times. And certainly the pandemic has demonstrated that. And we have to create a space for that. And that is one of the great engines of progress and, and, and forward motion. But at the same time, uh, we need to draw some parameters, some very bright lined boundaries around what is hate speech, what is the false spread of disinformation, and most importantly, incitement to violence, because that actually undermines our public safety, to undermines our democracy. And Canadians, I think, appreciate uh, where those bright lines need to be drawn. And I think it's unfortunate and regrettable that some of the leaders of this convoy have fallen into that category. Uh, but look, we've got people on the ground. I know that they're working very hard and we're going to continue to monitor the situation to ensure public safety. And just quickly before we go, are you concerned that extremist groups might use uh, this weekend to uh, recruit uh, or expand their reach in our country? Well, look, uh, I think that's why we, we have so many we're working within the public safety to, to keep eyes on the situation very carefully. But I think, look, let's uh, not overstate uh, what this is. Uh, I believe that those who express the kinds of, um, you know, conduct that can be clearly denounced uh, will be rejected by the vast majority of Canadians. Uh, truckers have taken up vaccinations to, you know, a, a, a 90 percent rate. Uh, we're the most vaccinated country in the world. Um, that is, I think, a source of pride for Canadians because we are following advice. And that's how we get back to work. That's how we get kids back to school. And most importantly, that's how we get back to normal, which everybody wants and which we're going to work tirelessly to get to. Marco Mendicino, Canada's Public Safety Minister, joining us today from Toronto. Good to see you, Marco. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Todd. You take care.